gigantic thank you to our legislature. For years now, they've been supporting the Model United Nations and Global Issues class by having them come before them and do a mock debate, which helps them to become better citizens of our community. And we really appreciate that. So here's <laughs> Until April of this year, the kids started in February, and through April, everything they did was designed to go and compete at Cornell University, where they competed against 600 students from around the world. And this class is an introductory class. They have just begun. Our advanced students are not with us today. And so as they did that and they completed their debate, they were sensational. The second half of the class curriculum is to choose a social activism project. And so the kids submitted three projects that they were really, really interested in doing. The travesty at Boston had just occurred. One group put forward a beautiful resolution that it should be a humanitarian project to look out for the folks of Boston, hold a race, and bring the proceeds to the folks who had been injured or hurt or families who had lost their loved ones. It was gorgeous. The second resolution was one on that of repealing the gun laws, which many of our students felt like were too stringent. And so they prepared a terrific resolution saying, this is too much, and that it felt that like it was in violation of their rights. The third piece that the students put together was one on the storage of liquid petroleum gas in the salt caverns on Seneca Lake. The three presentations went forward, and the kids had to vote on the one that resonated with them. The anti-LPG storage was the one that resonated with the kids, and they had a unanimous vote to go forward with their project. From that, they had to build a resolution that they would carry out every single step of their resolution. Their resolution included inviting energy to the class, inviting Scopa to the class, inviting Mr. Hearn, oh, Hearn to the class, inviting Gaspri Seneca to the class, participating in a some kind of a protest, um, putting forward, going to town meetings, and they have been extraordinary. You'd be so proud of these young citizens who have made their way in this project. So ladies and gentlemen, I now would like to turn things over to who is, acts as our Secretary General, who will today act as our chairperson and direct the kids in this dialogue. Please be aware that when we call on, um, when we call on Gas Free Seneca or we call on Energy, we are really talking to our students. This is, is a total mock debate, so we're not really talk, calling on those folks who might be here. We thank Gas Free Seneca, we thank Energy, we thank you all. You guys have been tremendous to us, all of you. You've given the kids just beautiful, beautiful information, and your generosity has been beyond belief. So kudos to everybody in this community. <laughs> Resolution. I have copies right here. Ms. Gill, we hand over the floor. Good morning, my fellow legislators. It is my honor today to present Resolution 1.1 as well as chair debate. I would first like to say that while we are awaiting the decision of the DEC to allow Energy to continue their efforts here in Schuyler County, it is necessary that we project our community's voice over the issue of the source or the storage of liquefied petroleum gas on the shores of Seneca Lake. With that being said, there are two visitors here today, Ms. Myers from Energy and Ms. Caslin from Gas Free Seneca. Ladies, you have the floor. Thank you. Good morning. My name is Lydia Myers, and I'm a representative from Energy. I just want to express my full support for this project and all the great things that it will provide for this community. We have been working on this project for four years, and we're doing everything possible to make sure the end result is the most desirable thing possible for this community. With the unemployment rate in Schuyler County at 8.2%, the 8 to 10 jobs that Energy will provide will certainly be beneficial to this community. Also, New York has the highest cost of propane in the nation, but Schuyler County is without a storage facility for this expensive natural source of energy. A storage facility would definitely bring down the cost of shipping propane from out of state. As energy is the basis of society, I would like to strongly show my support for this project and what it will entail for this community. Thank you. Hello everyone, my name is Lynn and I am an esteemed representative from Gas Free Seneca. I strongly believe that energy in our area is a tremendous mistake and I am extremely grateful that the legislator has finally taken a stance on this issue. As you all may already know, there has been two unreported accidents already in this energy facility, even though energy claims to be working out all the safety and environmental issues. As and let's not forget that 100% of LPG storage accidents have been in salt caverns alone. 
Also, I understand that 1% of homeowners in Watkins Glen and 18% in Reading use this LPG gas. Therefore, it's not greatly needed in our community. So I strongly agree that energy can be in business, but not in our area where it is not needed and can cause many issues. As a member of this community with deep love for this lake and town, I strongly urge the Schuyler County Legislative to take a stance against the storage of LPG, as this can immensely affect future generations to come. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now I will present Resolution 1.1, and you all can reference it. It reads, the Schuyler County Legislature on Liquefied Petroleum Gas Storage in Schuyler County opposes the storage of LPG in the salt caverns of Seneca Lake, considering the economic impact via taxes, tourism, employment, realizing the environmental and health concerns surrounding people, environment, and safety issues. We implore energy to relocate while recognizing the importance of U.S. salt as a manufacturer in our community and its long-standing history of being a good neighbor, the legislator implores energy to find a location for LPG storage that is not on Seneca Lake. Thank you. At this time, the chair would look favorably upon a motion to move into debate. Mr. Beaumont. A motion to move into debate, discuss resolution one That would be in favor. Thank you. Fellow legislators, I'd just like to start off by saying that three uh, areas are a big concern. Tourism, taxes, and employment. These areas affect many people, including people that work around the wineries in the area, people that work at U.S. Salt, and the property tax is going up for the uh, residents of Schuyler County due to this energy facility being created. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Mr. Butler. Thank you. As my fellow legislator, Mr. Beaumont, has said, yes, U.S. Salt employs a lot of people. And as according to the 2009 Schuyler County Economic Profile, they have offered 130 jobs to this area. And it, with this project, they will only increase that number of jobs because they'll need to increase salt mining as well as people running the storage facility. Thank you. I yield the time to the chair. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Ms. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Butler. Yes, our nation is facing a recession right now, but if you take a look at our nation's economy, we go through this a lot in our history. It's like a roller coaster. In about two to three years, it should be heading back up. So I'd like to state that Schuyler County, yes, we are facing this, and our unemployment rate is very high. But without this energy facility, we have been okay on our feet, and I believe that without this, we should be heading back and be stronger without this facility. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Mr. De La Osa Cruz. Thank you, Ms. Miller. Um, I would like to say that it's okay that we have, we, our area is built on tourism. We need to be more than just one-sided in our economic gains. We need industry in this area to improve and exceed and expand our money we have in this area to make a better area. Thank you. I need to chair. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Dale Osa Cruz. I would just like to point out that we have the U.S. salt facility here, which produces household, pharmaceutical, agricultural, and compressed salt, and it's been here since 1882. So it's not like we are running out of options. We also have things like the racetrack, which tickets are $35 to $40, $45 each. And it's called the International because people from all around here come. It's not just from here. We even have agritourism. It's tourism in the agricultural state. We have visitors from suburban and urban areas coming to see things that we produce, such as fruits and cheeses. So the only thing that you guys are saying is that we have tourism is not true. Thank you. Mr. Butler. Thank you, Ms. Elliott. I would also like to state, point out that according to the 2009 Schuyler County Economic Profile, our county rated 48 out of 62 in state per capita personal income, which means our account or our citizens are not making all that much money when you look at other areas of the state. I would just like to point out that we have 120 area, our area businesses here in WG or in Watkins Glen, excuse me, that are wineries, restaurants, lodgings that are tied to the tourism economy. In this area and neighboring areas, we employ 6,335 employed jobs tied to this tourism. If we bring energy into this area and a catastrophic event happens, there will be 6,335 jobs affected. Thank you. 
Mr. Butler. I would like to thank you, Ms. Gill. As you stated, yes, our economy is based on tourism, but a lot of those jobs in tourism are seasonal. A lot of people are let go at the end of the summer and they do not have a job because the tourism industry decreases in the wintertime. Mr. Butler, although your point is valid, I would like to point out that I know many hard-working winery owners who work year-round. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Mr. Belmont. Thank you, fellow legislators, for those comments. I'd just like to add that in our tourism sector, as you said, 6,335 people are employed every year and then some. Um, they also end up generating $146 million in labor income for the employees. And uh, visitor spending from tourism contributes about $19 million to local tax and $20 million in state tax. Mr. Bringing energy into this area may even increase tourism. People will be coming in through trucks every day, stopping in to eat. They will need lodging. They will need to get gas. This will just increase revenue instead of, as you are saying, it will lower revenue. Thank you. Ms. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. I'd like to bring forth a quote by Sandra Steinbrenner. The question is, will the number of jobs provided by energy exceed the number of people killed? Based off of this, we looked at Kansas, where a catastrophic event dealt with a death. And by this, it's human error. Human error every day doing this project, affecting our lake, affecting the future generations. So I'd like you all just to think about that. Thank you. Mr. Butler. Thank you. As some of my fellow legislators have stated, that our economy is largely based on tourism. Well, energy bought U.S. salt for $66 million. And they wouldn't just spend $66 million if they didn't think they were going to get that back plus more. So this shows that they have faith that we will make more money than $66 million and that it will help pay taxes to, towards our government. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Ms. Elliott. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Butler. I would just like to point out the fact that Watkins Glen homeowners, only 1% of them use LPG to heat their houses, as Lynn Ann had claimed, and also 18% in Reading use it. So if there's not a high demand for this gas in this area, why should we make the facility here? Thank you. Mr. De La Osa Chris. We have to make it here because it might not be the best for our county, but you have to look at the United States of America. We do not need more foreign resources and we, we don't have the money to buy foreign resources. We need to make it here to make it cheaper so we are more independable on ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. David Osakus. I would just like to point out the fact that we are the county legislature. We are looking out for our county. So we're not, you're looking at the big picture, I understand that. However, if there's not a high demand here, why make it here? There's other places in the United States that can use it more than us. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak, Mr. Butler? As my fellow legislator, Mr. David Osakus, has stated, yes, our our 85% of all natural gas used in the United States comes from the United States as opposed to the amount of oil we are getting from foreign sources. And in 2003, the EPA stated that natural gas reserves in the U.S. are estimated at 1,338 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. Thank you, Mr. Cummings. You stated that right now there is not a high need for LPG. However, with recent advances in technology, LPG can be used in cars, reducing CO2 emissions and other types of bad emissions. So with these new technologies, we may see an increase in the need for LPG in the area. Thank you. I would like to point out that although, yes, there may be a move towards more renewable energy, another option for renewable energy is green energy, which doesn't include gas. Thank you. Mr. Butler. Thank you, Ms. Gill. You say you talk about green energy. Well, natural gas is used in the green energy industry. It is used as fertilizer for ethanol production. And it is also used to make hydrogen to remove the soot from diesel fuel. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Mr. Delos. I would like to remind all of you that there is 8 to 10 jobs that we could include 8 to 10 more people into our community that can pay their bills, feed their families, and bring their kids to education, and like make their families be able to have a prosperous life. Thank you, I do my time to chair. Ms. Miller. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. De Los Cruz. I'd like to echo what you said. Do we officially know that these 8 to 10 jobs will be given to Schuyler County? Do we not know that energy might bring in other facilities, 
from other people and bring them in and they can move higher up in the chain? And do we, in fact, know that they will feed our families? Will they help these families who are poor and, and poverty stricken? Thank you. Mr. Hansen. To further develop on what Ms. Miller had just pointed out, um, the 8 to 10 jobs that are being created by energy coming in is nowhere near compared to the amount of jobs that our tourism creates and our winery industries create. So I'll give my time share. Mr. Butler. Thank you, Ms. Miller. You state that there are only going to be 8 to 10 full-time jobs, but there are also going to be around 50 construction jobs on the construction of this facility. Ms. Miller. Yes, Mr. Butler. But those jobs are only part-time. They will not last a full year. Only part-time income for their families. Mr. Bell. I'd just like to add in that further industrialization in this area will not help any industry in the tourism or wine industries or irreparably damage those. And uh, that many people have worked here for several generations to increase what we have in the wine and tourism industries. Uh, this could become one of the biggest facilities in this area. And if it becomes one of the biggest facilities in this area, tourists that come into the area are not going to think too lightly about that. They're going to think, well, why are we seeing big industry in this area if it's a big tourist site? Uh, so far, 45 firms employ 1,017 people in winery industries and 24.5 uh, million is paid in wages. Now, my question to you is why should we risk, risk all these jobs and livelihoods in the wine production and cause this area to become a place for industry? Thank you, Mr. Beaumont. I would also like to remind the legislator that 40% of the population of Schuyler County over the age of 25 only have a high school diploma. So we can't get college graduate, we don't have that many college graduates to move into other industries like green energy because that requires a high level of education that our, that our constituents do not have. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Mr. Beaumont. I'd just like to add another comment. In 2008, between the counties of Schuyler, Seneca, Ontario, and Yates, its total tourist visitors have spent more than $307 million, and that's income for our areas. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Mr. Dale was the I feel like we all understand that the summertime is perfect for tourism, and that works a lot. But what happens in the wintertime? We see that there's no tourists in the wintertime. We need to have another resource which we can use, like industry, to support that time when we don't have that kind of money. I yield my time to the chair. Thank you. Ms. Miller. Thank you, Mr. Dale. I'd like to bring up that, yes, during the summertime, we have high tourism. But in the winter, there's only about four months that we see little to no tourism. And then it picks right back up and we start. This is the way Schuyler County's economy has been, and I believe that it should stay that way. Thank you. Ms. Elliott. I'd like to make a motion to move on to our second part of the resolution. That would be in order. The second part of our resolution is to focus on safety issues concerning new people and environment. Ms. Elliott, you have the floor. Thank you. I would just like to point out that Seneca Lake is a class AA source for drinking water for over 100,000 people. That's not just our Wapenswell, that's also places like Geneva. So I would just like to point out that this facility may danger the people that are drinking this water and hurt our lake. Thank you. Mr. Butler. Thank you, my fellow legislators. On the topic of the truck traffic that will increase due to this project, Cargill, Salt, and Walmart also have large amounts of truck traffic due to their deliveries and their industry. And also, this facility would lessen the emissions from diesel trucks because they will have to travel less distance to get the liquid, liquefied petroleum gas. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Butler. However, I'd like to point out the fact that if the trucks aren't coming into our county, they will be still going out from the facility. So we will be getting the diesel trucks from that. We will also be getting the gases that are given off by the operation and the LPG gas. And if there are so many trucks coming in from Cargill and Walmart, why would we not want to lessen that by getting rid of the trucks here? Thank you. Ms. Miller. Thank you. I'd like to echo off a point made earlier by Ms. Elliott. Our lake, Seneca Lake, is, is, protect, is under protection laws. They protected our lake and its surrounding, right where they're going to be storing this gas. And the town of Reading, where this facility is going to be made, they are still waiting on two permits by the DEC company, and they continue to keep on expanding. Thank you. I would just like to point out uh, <clears throat> something that Mrs. Miller just said um, concerning energy. 
Energy has downplayed certain um, storage accidents, which is actually many people's concern with this project. They hired a firm to conduct a quantitative risk analysis of the proposed Watkins Glen LPG project, but they did not analyze previous um, catastrophes, evacuation orders, or accidents involving human error, therefore making the um, quantitative risk analysis zero. Thank you. Mr. Bob. Thank you. As Ms. Elliott said in the beginning, yes, only 1% of all homes in Watkins Glen and only 18% in Reading use this bottle of liquefied petroleum gas. But natural gas in homes produce 45% less CO2 emissions than all electric homes. Thank you. Mr. Cummings. On the comments of the liquefied petroleum gas in the lake causing lake problems, Liquefied petroleum gas is not water soluble. It will not affect the water if there was a leak in the lake. Thank you. Are there any other to speak? Mr. Beaumont. With the creation of this facility, there have been two unreported accidents, as stated earlier, and these two unreported accidents are very serious. One of them, which was a cause a geyser near the facility, and the geyser let off around a thousand gallons of brine into the near areas killing vegetation and as well as another one that led into another accident allowing 15,000 gallons of brine to pour straight into Seneca Lake. Um, I would just like to add something to Mr. Beaumont's. Um, we have known that there was an explosion in Kansas due to a leak in natural gas. This caused a death. Do you want that to happen in our county? In addition to that, there was actually an accident yesterday, June 4th, in a college in New York City. A pipeline was leaking either in the basement or in the building due to human error, and it caused a room to explode. Windows were bursted, doors went sailing. However, only seven people were injured. But that's still seven people. Do we want that to happen in our county? Mr. Butler. Thank you. I'd like to remind this, this legislator that Natural gas produces less emissions than coal, oil, and gasoline, and it is one of the cleanest fossil fuels that is available at this time. Yes, however, I would just like to add that there are other green energies, such as solar, wind, water. All of these have no pollution at all. Mr. Butler. Thank you, Ms. Elliott. Yes, there is a possibility of green energy, but that is a very expensive thing at this time. We can use natural gas as a substitute for coal and oil until we find a cheap and efficient way of producing green energy. Ms. Elliott. That is true that they are expensive in the upfront. Only the beginning costs of these energy systems will be expensive. However, after they are good and ready, they will produce this for a very low cost to humans. Thank you. Are there any others wishing to speak? Mr. Dale Osenkrutz. I would just like to point out the fact that the DEC and energy have been working together and energy has been fixing its problems when the DEC is telling them to fix their brine pools and stuff the energy has made modifications to them. Thank you. I'm uh, thanking Mr. Delos Cruz for those comments. I'd just like to add that following my earlier statements about two unreported accidents occurring that's two accidents that have occurred before they've had the okay to build the facility. Um, there are videos on YouTube showing incidents of these such accidents of uh, brine leaking onto vegetation. Also, since 1970, 1972, there have been roughly 15 catastrophic accidents, all of which have happened in salt caverns. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Yes, I would also like to reiterate a previous point I made. Uh, natural gas is used in the green energy industry, as Ms. Elliott said in which Miss Elliott wants green energy. And it is used for ethanol, which is a cleaner form of thing of gasoline that we can use to run our cars on. It is also used to remove some of the emissions from diesel food, from diesel trucks. And those are very big issues. Ms. Elliott. Thank you for that, Mr. Butler. However, I'd like to go back to a statement that Mr. De La Ossicruz made. You have re we have re-engineered these brine ponds. However, you cannot re-engineer these caverns that the gas is being stored in. They can cause catastrophic failures, 15 catastrophic failures, all in salt caverns. And there's already been two failures here. And this facility isn't even open yet. Thank you. Ms. Miller. Thank you. Basing off what Ms. Elliott just stated, 
I'd like to bring up Well 58. It was dug in 1992 and was used to mine salt and brine by a U.S. salt company. But Saul had plans to eventually use the cavern to store compressed natural gas. But looking at this, they had a engineer come in, seven curves, I believe, and his findings convinced U.S. Salt's local manager, Alan Perry, to plug and abandon the cavern surrounding the well, according to a once confidential letter. Now today, Energy wants to, in this cavern is scheduled to hold 1.5 billion of liquid, liquid propane. My question is, why if U.S. Salt Company left, why should we have let energy come in and store the salt if the cavern is unstable for storage? Thank you. I would just like to point out that Thomas Shelley, a retired safety expert from Cornell University, says that catastrophic events have happened, and when they do, they are very dramatic, such as in Wesley, Texas. A salt cavern storage leak of propane resulted in an explosion so powerful that it was felt 70 miles away in Houston and measured four on the Richter scale. Thank you. Mr. Butler. Thank you, Ms. Miller. On the point that you said about Well 58, energy re Sonar tested that cavern and found that there was nothing wrong. The per previous person who sonar tested it misused the sonar testing. Mr. Bowman. I'd just like to follow up on Ms. Gill's comments on catastrophic failures. Um, I'd like everyone to look at the big picture here. With the most alarming of risk of cat or catastrophic fires and explosions, and this would be occurring around millions of cubic feet of compressed volatile liquid gas. This could affect more than a three mile radius in any direction. That three mile radius goes through Watkins and partway into Montour. Uh, since 1972, as I said, catastrophic caverns events have occurred in salt caverns, but these events not only injure people, they cause loss of life and even the evacuation of entire towns. And one more problem with this if any catastrophic events were to happen, our local volunteer fire departments and emergency services are not equipped for any of these disasters. Thank you, Mr. Belmont. I would like to motion for a voting procedure. That would be in order. All those for resolution 1.1. All those opposed. This motion clearly passes. Can I have a motion to adjourn and a second? Motion to adjourn. Second. Meeting adjourned. legislators and Mr. Ahern, our county administrator, could um, offer their reflections on the students' professionalism, their level of debate, their research. We would be ever so grateful. Thank you very much. I would just have to say in respect for what Ahern is phenomenal. You don't see that a lot in government today. Very well done. Well, I'll just say again, yeah, I think that you did a fantastic amount of research around all of the areas that you spoke on. So very well done. It was, um, it, you certainly looked at everything in depth. Good arguments on both sides. I'd just like to say that I'm proud of everybody in my class. They've done such hard work in preparation for this. We've been working on this for seven weeks, and it's been long, and it's been grueling. But I must say, after this debate today, it's definitely been worth it. I know that um, through doing research, people have actually formed opinions on this issue. And we've learned to, um, through doing protests in town, I think we've learned to grow as people, to learn how being out in the real world has made us deal with criticism. Because it's definitely something that you need in the real world. And I would just like to say that I'm all proud of you.
our community came together to make sure that this group of young people could have the education and the resources that they needed in order to put forth such a project really shows what community spirit is all about. Everybody in this room has different opinions about what should happen, and yet here we have Energy with us, who's been so wonderful to the kids, they really did a beautiful job with them. We have Gas Free Seneca, who came in and did a lovely job as well. We have legislators who have to handle the complicated and difficult issues every day, who say, come on in, kids, be a part of this. We have Mr. O'Hearn, who took time out of his busy day to come and make sure the kids knew how to handle themselves before the legislator. So here's to the Watkins Glen and Schuyler County community for their incredible work. We love our kids. Thank you. 